I'm going to challenge your thinking here a little bit. Something as basic in morality as honesty can be used against us. Because we are immersed in religious and moral rules, we forget that not everything is part of morality. Yes, I'll tell you right now that it is okay to lie, and you'll need to feel free about doing so. And doing so is an integral part of our internet privacy, and likely our freedom. And you'll be able to judge for yourself when it's okay to lie and when it's not. But that should come with the knowledge that lying can be used to stop evil. Interested? Stay right there. I'm on the platform odyssey.com and I'm now one of the top creators on there. Just for insurance, in case I get the platform, please follow me there using the link in the description. I have a VPN service, Bytes VPN. My company also sells the Google phones and Brax routers. These products are made to make your identity disappear on the internet. And hopefully this video will explain why these products are important. If you're interested in them, they are on my app Brax Me, and the link is in the description. I'll tell you right now that in real life interpersonal relationships, and even in business dealings, I have a very strong moral compass that tells me not to lie. So if you think I'm here to enable bad people, criminals, and politicians who lie for a living, then we're going to go off on the wrong foot since I'm going to be very clear about where I stand. I do not condone that kind of lying because obviously lying on a personal level in real life is a way for the liar to gain an advantage over the other person by building false trust and false expectation. But the moral principle of not lying falls flat in a real world where your honesty is used against you particularly on the internet. And it's not as simple as saying you can lie on the internet but not in real life. The funny thing is that though lying is considered always wrong, politicians constantly lie and we know it. We know it because what they promise during their election campaign ends up being different during their term of service once elected. And we surprisingly accept that. It's like politicians get a pass as long as most of what they do conform to what we want. So if you're uptight about not lying, then honestly evaluate what you see around you. In the political world, the lies are ways to manipulate the demographics. The political machine polls the electorate and then they can alter the results to their benefit by stating a different view to attract the attention of a particular subgroup. Though politicians get a pass, in our day-to-day -day life, lying is punished severely. Lying to your employer, like stating false statements in your job application, will almost surely get you terminated. Lying on your tax returns will end up costing you fines, penalties, and even a potential jail time. Cheating on your exams in college, which is another form of lying, will get you expelled. And for those who guide themselves by the Bible's Ten Commandments, which is the majority of the world's population, we are clearly told as kids that we must not lie or otherwise we shall be subject to the wrath of the Almighty. So it's fair to say that we have been trained through Pavlovian conditioning that we must be truthful. Liars deserve to be punished by society and not just in the afterlife. The problem is that the world is no longer black and white. We now have the internet to contend with and the threats to our safety have changed. There are bad people on the internet called doxers that use our information that we have shared truthfully and use it against us. Often it is used to shame us and the goal is to shut us down and keep us from speaking on the internet. Criminals use our honesty on the internet to find out what our habits are and then use this information to rob us and take our belongings. Social media platforms that promote a verified identity such as Facebook are used against us to feed us false or limited information. Platforms like Google want to know what we think so they can manipulate us by pummeling us with alternate ideas and products to basically change our opinions. Just bear with me a little to explore the risks of honesty and then I'll try to change your mindset about something that you must absolutely feel comfortable lying about. By the way, if you learned something here and find it interesting, I hope you hit that subscribe button on the lower right part of the video. First, let me explore these threats and take advantage of your honesty in new ways. Doxing. 
Doxing is a skillful attempt to retrieve your private information on the internet. A doxer can find out a lot about this information that average people cannot see. We all have lots of data on the internet, even just from government public records. But when a stranger collects this information and uses it against us, it is hurtful, embarrassing, and often dangerous. Doxing is not in itself illegal, though many social media platforms now will terminate a user who publicly posts dox information with the intent of harming the individual being attacked. I have pretty advanced doxing skills and I use this knowledge for your benefit. One of the reasons I'm able to find things on the internet about anyone, while others can't, is that I understand how honesty will prevail. Our habits pushing forward the need to be honest leaves traces even as we try to make ourselves somewhat anonymous on the internet. A lot of people think they can hide on the internet. But because of long-term habits, you will find that you will have leaked data that cannot be taken back. Your honesty is a permanent record. This is a doctor's dream. Things that we have difficulty lying about are our name, our sticking close to our real name, our gender, location, and our connections. We don't want to be perceived as a liar, so we want to be consistent in our story as we reveal ourselves on the internet. This leads to the very useless internet qualifier that I've ever heard. I have nothing to hide. Well, you're quite wrong. The doctor will make use of the fact that you have nothing to hide and find all your flaws and your family's flaws. All the secret things that you wish the public didn't know. In other words, your dirty laundry. You have nothing to hide. I guess you and your family must be perfect. I know of no such perfect person. We all have some sort of dirty laundry unless we are little kids. Criminals. Doxing can be taken to a criminal level. For example, I remember a news report some years back of a high schooler in LA who was the number one basketball player and was then recruited to UCLA for college. This was in the news. A criminal doctor got his address and when there was a big championship game at UCLA, the criminals proceeded to rob this family's house. One of the things that we don't understand, and it doesn't have to be at the level of lying, is that we don't need to volunteer information about our life activities on the internet where strangers know our schedules. Are you going on vacation? Did you announce that clearly on social media? Can your name and address be doxxed? If so, then you are a good target for robbery. Sometimes we forget that boasting is not part of honesty. Facebook. One of the key platforms that promote honesty about who you are, and of course boasting, is Facebook. Basically, the platform requires that you use your real name. They will terminate your account if you use a different identity. They collect such extensive information about you as who your relatives are and your location. Each photo you post is cross-verified for location. Your face is facially recognized and tagged with your identity in group photos. The surroundings in the photo are further classified to verify that you are in the location you say you are. Your information is cross-verified because your relatives and friends and classmates will confirm who you are when they become a friend and they classify you by a relationship circle. You are further verified by uploaded contact lists that confirm your address and phone number. Basically, Facebook has become as verifiable as a passport, and those with a certain identity are graded with a high social score. Those who have no friends and appear flighty will have a low social score and will be limited by Facebook. So Facebook is certain to reward your honesty. They also like that you boast about your vacations and your new cars and your successes. In return, Facebook profiles you and categorizes you into a cohort that will then allow advertising, political messages, and targeted news to be fed into your timeline based on your historical behavior and ideas. Of course, I will hear the same response. So what? I have nothing to hide. Yet these are the same people that were targeted by Cambridge Analytica with political messaging, an attempt to manipulate an election. Cambridge Analytica got so detailed with their profiling that they actually were able to pinpoint the personality of 50 million Americans. And what I didn't tell you earlier is that the main, main source of doxing data on the internet is Facebook. If you have a Facebook account, then I would say you are zocked. 
It doesn't matter what name or identity you use on other social media, a doxer will find you and nothing you have on Facebook can be hidden. To an expert doxer, everything can be found regardless of your privacy settings. Google. Other platforms are constantly trying to collect our every action. They have no moral right to collect all of our activity, but we let them. We want to act like honest people, so we dutifully log into everything with our Google ID, use our real name, and then match everything we do on the internet so the Googles of the world will know our every action. Hey, you want it to be honest. No lying, right? So there, Google loves you. You have provided a consistent behavior for them to track and record. I've already explained in other videos how Google uses this data to alter what you see in your search results and what you see on the internet based on what Google wants you to see. In other words, because you have provided a consistent identity, consistent behavior, and a consistent record over time of IP addresses, locations, and device fingerprints, you allow Google to collect a massive amount of information about you that can be used to analyze your thought process. Now, when you give such a big corporation so much power, then you enable them to lie to you. There, your honesty is now used against you. Knowing who you are allows them to control the spigot of information, so you are denied knowing about certain things. Certain topics will not be visible to you. If you're spending your time solely on internet interaction instead of hanging out with friends, the information you receive will be called disinformation. Sometimes if some information got to you that they meant to stop, they'll use a different word for that. They will call it fake news. There are many derogatory terms used to diminish the importance of a message, like calling me a tinfoil hat. Now, there really are fake news, but always wonder who is doing the judging. Why lying is good. What I'm trying to tell you here is that in the internet era, acting like honest and straightforward citizens is not going to work. Because in essence, you are dealing with machines, an artificial intelligence or AI. Computers analyzed your every thought and initially in 2007, they used it to do marketing so it was useful to sell you products. In 2021, that is no longer the objective. The high-minded technocrats have realized that the AI can be used to change people's minds, to promote certain issues as important beyond all, to mold a new society that fits the objectives of the few billionaires in control. Again, I repeat to you all, in real life interpersonal relationships, I personally would never lie. It is immoral. But people, a computer is not a person. Coming from a tech guy, I'm telling you right now that you have no duty to the machine. You have every freedom to lie to the machine if you want. And personally, I would advise that you lie deliberately on certain things. When lying is bad, it's common for people to be taken advantage of on the internet. Scamming, of course, is so common, and these should be obvious immoral acts of lying. And certainly, one that I do not condone is catfishing. This is when someone takes on a fake identity on the internet and uses it in personal interaction like in dating sites. I want to be clear. What I'm teaching is to feel free about lying to the machine. And when it comes to dealing with particular people, there is no difference between lying on the internet and lying in person in real life. On the other hand, I don't think there is anything wrong in acknowledging to someone in a person-to-person -person message that you are not using a real identity. Lying to the machine is the secret. Yes, folks, lying to the machine is the only way to get internet privacy. I call it lying because sometimes we are forced to classify ourselves and I refuse to partake in that classification. If I go to a social media website and it asks for my name, what reason is there to give a real name? What reason is there to give a real birth date? One of the reasons I did this video is that many of you are racked with guilt just from withholding your real identity from the machine. Aside from your name, the machine will cross-verify your information in other ways. The machine will track your IP address and location. This is where they make it hard to lie. So fight back by lying about your IP address using a VPN and you turn off location permissions on your phone. But that is not enough. Google tracks your location. Google tracks your location even without your permission. In my case, I use a de-Googled phone and that prevents that location from being revealed. Google will identify you with a Google ID and your device identifiers. I call this a device fingerprint. Apple does the same thing. 
Solution, same thing. I use a de Google phone to hide all that. With all this, Google is deprived of information. I like to Google. Google can't associate any activities to my identity. But you can see how persistent they are in tracking us that we have no choice but to lie. Lying about your identity. So for my non-techie friends, I'm going to keep this simple. The first level of protection of our internet privacy is to guard your identity. You can see that I described several steps there and I tried to explain it with as little tech terms as I can. The enemy, my friends, is the AI or artificial intelligence at Google, Facebook, and others. Let's just briefly talk about how this AI machine works. Their goal is to track all of what we do on the internet. In case you think I'm making this up, there's a group of people who study the collection of data and they're called data scientists. And you can look up what data scientists talk about by searching for them on YouTube. Originally, this scientist focused on the marketing line that we are the product. Now I think that has expanded to we are the tool. We are the tool for big tech to profit and we are the tool for big tech to manipulate a population. They are way beyond feeding ads now. But the big tech AI machines with their army of data scientists have a weakness. In order for the information they collect to be usable, it has to be identifiable to each of us. It's not useful to know how many of you visit CNN versus Fox News. It is more useful to know that Jose Rodriguez is watching Fox News. If the AI can't associate behavior to an identity, the data has to be thrown away. Remember the intent here. Find out what you're thinking and doing so that you are sent new information to alter what you see and eventually to convince you to do something. I already have factual videos explaining how they actually do this kind of manipulation, so I'm not making this up. When you lie about your identity, the end result is that you, in effect, prevent any doxer from attacking you. By not knowing your identity, criminals, scammers, and catfishers cannot find out your address, your actual habits, and current plans. As someone with expertise in this data, I'm telling you right now that this is an existential threat. Having an AI controlled by a few that knows our every thought is ultra dangerous. So put in simple terms, do not use your real name on the internet and find out ways to remove your internet fingerprints. Lying about your thoughts. Governments, of course, don't want you to lie about your thoughts, especially if you're planning something that's anti-government. But we don't need to go that far. All I'm concerned about is that some large database at Google and Facebook knows your every idea. And because of this, some of you may feel like it is too late. They have potentially a decade of information or more collected on you so far. This bugs me to no end especially at Facebook. Unfortunately, Facebook is so adept at tracking your actions that you cannot win. This is likely the most evil platform on the planet. You will get zucked by Zuck for sure. I'm sure their AI knows every private discussion you've had with your friends on Messenger and even who you're talking to on WhatsApp. So when it comes to Facebook, the only real answer is to delete everything you have on the platform and leave Facebook. It's better to just disappear and no further action is needed after deletion, of course. But when it comes to Google, which controls so much of what happens on the internet, that is not really a good choice. You almost can't function on the internet without encountering Google. So here I have a different response. I say corrupt their data with lies or use the nicer word disinformation. If you already have a Google ID that you've used in a while and they've collected so much data about you, it's time to introduce some inconsistencies in your behavior, ideas, and responses so you become weird. Or in data terms, you become an outlier and your data will be ignored. I actually suggest some specific techniques on how to do this in other videos, like dedicating a browser to Google only and logged in with a Google ID and only doing things you want Google to see. And then you perform your other internet activities on different browsers that never have Google. So Google will get data about you and this time you will not hide it, except you will behave differently from what they expect. The reason this requires explaining is that the average non-techie person does not understand that data scientists deal with consistent patterns. They predict behavior based on known patterns. 
If you behave inconsistently, for example, by shifting from Fox News to CNN, or from being a normie to a non-normie, it confuses the dumb computer AI. Lying, our defensive weapon. In summary, lying on internet social media platforms is our only remaining defense. The more of us that obscure our identity and send inconsistent information to their big tech AI machines, then their ability to manipulate us diminishes. We win. Then we can go back to real life where we can actually talk to our real friends with no lying in person. Thank you for watching and see you next time.